as Māori rather than relying on the government to to for your rangatiratanga. You need to have a rangatiratanga mindset. As a uh, researcher, right, you think, man, this, we're lucky. Oh, at the end of the two days, oh, it's actually fai mana, fai rawa, fai oranga, mm-hmm. wina. If that's not right, we're never going to be right. All the diaries, all the accounts say our people dominated commercial fishing. Steeped in your reo, steeped in your, um, you know, Māori culture, you can do anything in this world. Uh, Tutahia ki me mihi katika i, uh, ki a koe e, e keini i tō taenga mai, i tō hara mai ki tēnei kō rero rero ki tēnei wānanga. Uh, ki te whakawhāra ki hia ngā mātauranga ou uh, ko, ko hopungia i ngā tau ko pahure. Um, re re mihi ana ki a koe. Um, so Tutahia ki, uh, well, I, I guess we always start the, the podcast with you as, as, the, as the kairanga ho, as the researcher. So... Um, yeah, ko wai koe, no hea koe, and then we can we can sort of roll on from that. Uh, Rawe, uh, ko maua te maunga, uh, he tauranga te, te moana, uh, he ko kotare no tauranga moana. Uh, he uri no mai a uh, matirangi nui mei naitarangi, uh, he whaka uri anō uh, i te taha o te hōwhanga pē uh, me te hokianga. He te rarawa hau. Uh, me te tahu tak papa uh, no te aroa ia uh, nā te whakau e nā te ui nuku kopako ya ko kei ntai pa tōku ingoa so um, yeah te nā koe kia ora so um, Kane tell us a little bit about your history in, in terms of you know researching your sort of I guess your career path and sort of what what has led to mm. um you know, the project Tahu Hu Matato. Yeah, I guess that's that's a good place to start. Um I come out with a master's degree in about two thousand and seven. Um walked into a group here in Taranga called Manaki Tawanui. Um and I guess their core purpose at that time was to start building an entity uh that was iwi led, um, that could help our hapu uh, in Taranga Mona. Um I think the vision of it was, yeah, absolutely bang on. Um, but naturally, when you're going in as a small fish in a big pond, uh, you start learning uh, lots of things. And so my uh, research career started there. Um, was fortunate enough to be involved and help set up a, a project called Manaki Tahamona. And that was um, an MB-funded project with two case studies. One was in... Uh, the Ōtaki area, Raikua, Raikura ki te Tonga, and also here in Tauranga. Um, we had a myriad of, I guess, science entities based in that, that kaupapa too, and it really was the launch pad for us. Um, we learnt a lot in those um, six years of that, that project. Um, we learnt definitely, not how, definitely how not to do things, um, because I guess... Um, Māori boy, brought up by the sea, fortunate enough to be brought up by my grandmother on the moana uh, and her brothers, um, went to the big wide world to get a degree, come back, thought you know everything, eh? and the old adage, grab a tea towel uh, before you start, <laughs> start launching off into what you want to do. So um, I knew and learnt uh, in that process of that project how important relationships were. And um, my matua at the time, uh, who's passed away now, um, just reminded me of of how we connect and what's the proper way to connect. And being mindful too, my connections are already being put in place uh, through Whakapapa. So traversing around the mona, coming up with ideas and then coming back, reflecting, um, and then going back out to my whānau again and actually just listening understanding and uh, getting an inkling into, I guess, what they're dealing with in that time and period. Fast forward a couple of years, Rena hit the rock, you know, and so everyone's scrambling again, and so we're more learnings and, and more whawhai and more understanding, and I think 
fortunate enough uh, for me. Um, I had a good mentor with me, Brother Rion. He's still here today. He's um, quite an influence on my life in Pāropata. Just reminding me of a process, right? Uh, a reflective process. And every, every time you go through hard times, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. But when you do come out into the light at the end of the tunnel, make sure that you've learned something. So... That's always stuck with me, and, and I've kind of brought that into our research. I'm um, at Manaki Tawanui. Um, we kind of grew that into a quite a big um, outfit, I guess. Um, and used, I guess, sustainable seas as another, another pivot point to, to grow what we wanted to do. And a lot of those things were structured around um, use of maramataka, uh, traditional kupu around our assessments and our taio, um, making sure that our knowledge holders are at the forefront of where that information comes from. And we're talking about our kaumatua and our, our pakeke, our aunties and uncles who do the mahi. Mm. Right? They know uh, absolutely a lot. And very thankful to uh, understand and be uh, aside with them and then grow a team. Um, I think our team ended up to being close to 12 researchers, all Māori, all fresh out of university. Um, we had um, gotten to a stage where we were able to subcontract all our kaumātua for their time, you know, so it was a really cool, cool um, inkling and sustainable seas was a, a huge pivot point for that. Um, yeah. Sounds like a mean, <laughs> mean hiding a yeah, huge journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of going from uh, from what you've just said, it, it kind of feels like you've gone from you know the tainer mm. to somewhat of a tour kind of where you've got a team and you're probably being that sort of mentor person for your you know mm. researchers just out of uni. So it's kind of full circle in a sense, you know. Yeah, somewhat. Um, Obviously, you'll still be learning. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and we should all have that focado in mind, you know, and I don't put myself as knowing everything, but I know people who do know things, and I think it's important to have them in the circle if there's a cope-up or an intervention to have a discussion about. So Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So we've we've sort of got the back the background and the in the history and your research history, and then we've sort of we've sort of come to um to Tahuhu Matato. So tell me a little bit about the project. What what was sort of the, the goals? What were you looking to achieve? And, you know, a bit of the whakapapa around, around it. Yeah, so that kopop actually started in phase one of Sustainable Seas. Um, it came out of the whakaro of um, the whanos we were working with here in Tauranga. Um, across the Moana, uh, we had built a quite a good... Um, Kahui, I guess, of looking at ways to do with, work with our whānau. But one of the things that was always coming out is that uh, the knowledge has been lost through some form of another, um, whether it be uh, matua passing away or a fire passing away. And so Te Tahuhu Matato was really looking at what kind of system or process can we put in place to one uh, capture knowledge um, that's relevant for the whānau and how can we help them with that um, but also to store it um, and so in phase one we began I guess a pilot around looking or talking to our whānau around the morning around if we were to set up some form of a structure what would that look like and everyone kind of gravitated to traditional methods you know or waiata and the like in terms of creating uh, storage protocols for collecting information uh, and then um, others talked about digital modes I guess and looking at digital methods for storing information um, having it accessible to those whānau coming up with the right um, determinations around who owns the mana of that kaupapa and more importantly, the corridor that went in was enhanced. Uh, Mana was enhanced coming out. So um, had some great conversations around that. And so Te Tahu Matato uh, in phase two was to build that, that tool um, and look at uh, ways to do that. Um, also, it's probably 
good to mention that uh, Tatahu Matatu was paired with the Ngātohu project. And so there was the Ngātohu project was set up to reclaim knowledge around Maramataka within different areas. And we used Tatahu Matatu as a way to store that information for the whānau who were navigating through that reclamation process. So um, it kind of worked really, really well in that. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of what the the base of it was. Uh, we knew there was a need mm. uh, to capture knowledge. And, and I think um, more importantly, um, the need come out of our kaitiaki working in these spaces and representing the hapu or the iwi um, and environmental matters. Um, but some of them were put in that space with not all the kōrero. So if they had a, uh, an assurance that all this kōrero come from a space, their hapu, their komato or whatever, then they won't be getting things wrong or deviating off the path of what those that kōrero actually says. So um, that's kind of how te tahu matato come about. Mm. A bit of a reference tool for our kaitiaki to work in their spaces. Yeah, it's a. It sounds like an amazing tool, and you know something that I, I guess a lot of our whānau have thought about in terms of the loss of matauranga. Mm. You know, and the loss of whether that be through you know mate or you know tamitanga, you know colonization, you know all of that in terms of our our tohunga mm. in different arenas. Yeah. And that matauranga and just the way of living. It wasn't even mato, you know, it was just like this is how we operate. Yeah. Being lost. So it's cool that you thought about something that could retain that knowledge and be used to teach, but also in a mana enhancing way. Yeah. Yeah. What was sort of underpinning all of the, you know, the mahi that went into it? Because obviously it's, you know, kaupapa. Mm. It's it's Māori. Yeah. Matauranga Māori. You know, what? What did you sort of use to safeguard yourselves in terms of this, you know, reciprocity and mm. you know, use of matauranga and, you know, I was obviously asking people to give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess um, it's also important to know that, you know, it is a cyclical process. Yeah. Um, it's not tell you in it and come out the other end where you realise um, uh, the need for, for things even though you've built them. Um, so I, I guess like for us, we wanted to ground, um, that kaupapa in something and frame it in a way that was really resonant with everyone we worked with. And so at the second phase, you know, we've got our whānau from Taronga, our whānau from Tokumaru Bay, our whānau from Natikuri, you know, and so they have a myriad of knowledge, you know, you've got waka builders up there and maramataka experts. Papa Rao, for example, you know, so, you know, you've got all these quite intimidating people with all their knowledge, and when you start talking to them about a digital tool, they just switch off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't use a digital tool to learn what I know, so uh, we started talking with those those matuas and around, you know, what would be the best framework to create the space um, and have the discussion. Um, and so we naturally reverted back to our Puraka. Nakiti o te wananga, right? So, um, the, the the pathway that Tane took, how he was chosen to to go get the kite, trials and tribulations that he met with his brother, uh, Fido, to get the hmm. to 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 get the kite, the jubilation of getting the kite, the importance of what the kite are for, uh, not to mention all the other maturanga around that that kite and those purposes. You know, you talk about pude and preparing yourself to receive information so those were quite important um and so we were lucky to spend a good year on just having a wānanga about nā kite o te wānanga and so as a uh researcher right you think man this, we're lucky to get to have time with these matua uh, but also to acknowledge their time too in terms of resourcing so it was really cool, and that's kind of where our framework for Tatahu Matato, well, that tool come about. Mm. Yeah. I guess um, you mentioned that you've got, you, you sort of built strong hononga and relationships with whānau mm. around this rohe, you know, which is which I think is pivotal in terms of research, but just as, as a general sort of, you know, 
I guess, principle of life, building good relationships. Mm. How would, you know, how did you go about that? Mm. What was it that allowed you to create those good relationships and, and even enter into these spaces? Yeah, so we were lucky um, with our, uh, in phase two, I guess, uh, the natural progression was to st still work with my whanau here in Tauranga. Um, at that time, um, we had um, a person named Regan Fairley um, from Tokumaru Bay who was working with us too. He had just finished his degree, um, worked with us for a couple of years, kind of talked to him about taking a project down to Toko. He was super keen. He could go back home and work with his whanau. Um, so that created that hōnunga straight away. Um, and then with our whanau up Ngāti Uncle Wayne, who's who's at this conference now, um, I had heard about my uncle for a long time, and I had heard about him um, through an arty, um, So, and I was keen to go up and see him. And so when I went up and seen him, and this was before the project was even thought of, uh, um, I sat with him for a couple of days, and we went to, you know, significant sites up up in the Taitokuro, right up north, you know, a couple way to all these places that just make you feel tow, mm. right? And so um, then I knew that, um, oh, one, I was lucky, yeah, you know, to have an uncle that still held lots of knowledge, um, but one, he was keen to share it. And so I guess at the end, I asked him, like, if we have a kaupapa uncle, would you be keen to be a part of it? And he says, well, it depends on the kaupapa, actually. I don't know if that's a taitokiro thing, <laughs> you know, just take it as it comes. But uh, we had a, a good base of researchers, young Māori researchers, mm. who were thriving for that knowledge, you know, and guidance. And so the whakaaro was if uncle could be a part of it, he could bring in our whānau, and then, um, you know, it'll grow us as a, as a research group. And so... In terms of the hōnunga up there, we just went up there and spent time with him. Uh, he does a uh, native nursery, puts out thousands of plants a year for putting around Taitakaru wetlands, you know, so we just spent time in his nursery, spent time learning his kupu, uh, spent time helping the marae, painting the marae, you know, so that was our engagement protocol, if mm. you want to call it that. Um, and still, uh, even after those meetings, he was reluctant and I, I think it was more the reluctancy because we couldn't see he was he had other things on right he's a well-known person in his communities so everyone's shoulder tapping him for advice and guidance and so we, we had to be reminded of Matewa, i guess mm. that was the short we went ahead with the project and and it wasn't until um maybe six months into the project where his whānau fully come on board and, man, yeah, they do amazing things. So very, very lucky. But I guess in terms of the hōlunga, building relationships, it was a low-lying fruit thing, mm. to be honest. Um, I, in any time when you look at a research project and what I was doing at that time was two things, really. There's good outcomes on the ground and our research entity is growing as people you know, that can service their community. So I knew Uncle Wayne could do that. And so that was literally why I was, in his mind, hassling him. <laughs> and in his words, he was resisting me. So uh, we went through that process ourselves until you're sitting here having a cup of tea at a conference. So um, that's kind of our hōnunga. Yeah. And just, I guess, in terms of this final stage of the of the project you mentioned that you sort of passed them potentially like that at the end of of the tahuhu matatau but you know what are you looking you know uh, what are you looking to achieve sort of wrapping it up what is sort of looking forward into the future you know what what does it look like in terms of the project yeah yeah that's a great question and it's it's always on the the lips of our whānau as, as facilitators of, of these pukenga, right? Um, the relationships have been built. Hmm. The conversations have continued. But I guess more importantly, um, you know, we, we've learnt a lot ourselves and we 
we get to a stage, I guess, where um, we have to question, you know, it's the same as that to in his presentation yesterday, you know, what's our why here? And it's easy to hunt for research money. Well, it's not easy. It's a process in itself. <laughs> but, um, you know, why are we doing it? And I think we've all come to the conclusion of um, we need to take these things back to our own kainga and, and do them ourselves. And so I, I guess that's that's where they've taken it. In terms of the, the, the project itself, um, a digital tool is, um, and I mentioned it earlier, it's... It's just a tool. Uh, it doesn't define you. Um, one of the uh, things that Matua Wayne has told us, you know, you need to be the app. You don't need a tool to learn. You just need to be present. And so it's funny how we've used uh, all that conversation to go into a tool coming out that, oh, maybe the tool's just the tool and we don't need the tool. We just <laughs> need to be present and have these conversations further. Mm. And so I guess as a, as a post challenge, um, uh, discussion, that's what it is, is keeping the connection, um, thriving, you know, so our researchers, uh, can go up north any time they want. Uncle Wayne will, will show them around, and they're like family to Uncle now, um, you know. So there's that trust there. And um, our Toko Fano have taken their project into another space, and they've got research funding um, to grow their stuff even more, you know. So we can just go total call that, you know. Mm. It's, and so um, I guess being ad lib around research funding it doesn't define us i guess is what i'm trying to say mm. we have to define it ourselves and i think one of the good things that we were always mindful of and a saying that we have um in our group is that we need to work ourselves out of a job because mm -hmm. right? if we stay in there for ourselves and then it's just ourselves we're focusing on so well, i think uh as a whakaaro, it's progressed us to just keep the relationship and, and help the whānau wherever they need. Um, being mindful, you know, uh, our whānau both in Tauranga Mōna, Ngāti or across the motu, uh, the dynamics of what they have to deal with on a daily basis, let alone a yearly or temporal basis is huge. So um, I guess at the end of the day, the project as important as it was to connect us, doesn't define us in our connections going forward. So, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And I guess we've we've been asking sort of, in terms of looking at the Apopo Tanga and, you know, the, the up-and-coming researchers, mm -hmm. I don't know how Māori, um, you know, what, what, what would you say to them, you know, to potentially people that might not think about research as a, researching as a, as a career or looking at getting into it? Um, yeah, how old for Carl? Oh, no, that's a great question. And I know, like, in my era, uh, that makes it me sound very old, but, like, when I first got into studying and coming out, mm. a lot of our Māori whānau had just been revitalised in their language, you know, and I think um, today our up-and-coming Māori researchers know their language all very, very well, and I think that's just an amazing, powerful thing because it's not until you look at the taiao through your reo is that you actually understand it in a te ao Māori way. And so, man, I, I, nothing but love for that. You know what I mean? So it's a huge advantage that I, I know I didn't have because um, I didn't think it was that important to me. Well, not, not, not important. I had just focused on becoming a, 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 on my degree, and that's all it was. And so, come full circle, you know, I'm not envious of our, of our young whanau, I'm just, man, I just can't wait to see what happens. And so I think for our up-and-coming young Māori researchers, the, the tono is just to be yourself. Hey, you've been taught your values. Mm. And they sit in there very well. It comes out in there real. I don't I don't think they should change that at all. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. Now meet mean, mean core at all and I think you've sort of 
for me anyways I, I i sort of understand where the project is and and i guess a bit of the fakaro the, the fakaro nui that you have mm. and and your organization has towards um researching and it and it's it's beautiful yeah it's it's it's, it's lovely sure. yeah so i just want to acknowledge that and acknowledge you for the mahi that you've done and you will continue to do and personally but also in uplifting our 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 future researchers and and you know kairanga ho maori so in mm. mihiana um i think ko nafetira but if there's anything else that i may have missed or that you sort of wanted to acknowledge absolutely um like i mentioned i had left the space and um i don't know if you're interviewing kelly Ronata, but she took over and She's just done an amazing job as well. It's it's funny. It's not to you looking from outside in. You realise, man, that's that's cool. Mm. Uh, so there's that, and then I'm also mindful that you know a lot of this wouldn't happen if there weren't people creating spaces for other people. Um, you hear about it in our little project, Uncle Wayne creating space for us to be in Taitokiro, same with Regan and and Tokumaru Bay, but. Um, I don't know if this is being recorded and she'll see this, but the likes of Linda Faulkner creating spaces for our Māori researchers. And I believe without a doubt, if it wasn't for her, this these things wouldn't be happening uh, the way that they are. So acknowledging those uh, visionaries who create space for Māori to be themselves and in, in what we would say a Pākehā context is, is, is huge. And so have to acknowledge that. Pretty much, yeah. Awesome. Well, tēnā koe i ene, ene kōrero, ene, um, toha toha mātauranga. Yeah, sharing of knowledge. Um, and, and yeah, just really acknowledge you came forward with the mahi, and um, thank you for joining us on the podcast. I appreciate it, bro. Thank you.